When Homo sapiens and Neanderthals interbred did they become a new species, or did Neanderthals become extinct? The answer isn't as clear as you would think. It has long been recognized that hybridization, defined here as mating between genetically distinguishable populations, can have a variety of evolutionary outcomes. Though it may sound counterintuitive, evolution and extinction aren't mutually exclusive. It's an obvious truth even if it seems contradictory, the same selective pressures that drive some species to extinction force others to adapt and evolve. What happened to Neanderthals is an example of introgressive extinction, otherwise known as reverse speciation. Reverse speciation is when distinct species come together again, until they become one species yet again. But the process isn't as simple as it sounds. Just because two become one, doesn't mean it's the same species that you started out with. Around 600,000 years ago, Europe was invaded by large-brained hominins using Acheulean stone tools. They were probably African immigrants, because similar fossils and tools occur earlier in Africa. They have been called archaic Homo sapiens, Homo heidelbergensis, and early Neanderthals, yet they remain mysterious. They may have been ancestors of Neanderthals and modern humans, or ancestors of Neanderthals only, or an evolutionary dead end. This story is similar to that of modern Eurasians, who also separated from an African population, and then experienced a population size bottleneck and split into regional populations. Thus, the modern Eurasian diaspora seems to have been foreshadowed by another one, which happened more than half a million years earlier. Did Neanderthals become extinct, or were they assimilated into the contemporary human population, and so survived? Were they even a separate species, and why does it matter? One of the most frequent comments on this channel is that Neanderthals did not go extinct, since they were assimilated into contemporary humans. A single human carries an average of roughly 2% Neanderthal DNA overall, with some regions and backgrounds having a high of 3% per human. To simplify things, the term human in this movie exclusively refers to Homo sapiens, however Neanderthals were also human. The DNA of Neanderthals and modern humans appears to be 99.7% similar, meaning they are our closest extinct ancestors. With a current global population of almost 8 billion people, this indicates that there has never been more Neanderthal DNA on the planet. What distinguishes humans from Neanderthals? With a new method that may allow for more precise comparisons between the DNA of present humans and that of our extinct ancestors, scientists have taken another step toward answering an old riddle. Only 7% of our genome is unique to humans and not shared by any early relatives. That's a modest amount, but it's evidence like this that scientists are abandoning the notion that humans are radically different from Neanderthals. The findings of the latest investigations corroborate the humanity of the Neanderthals, demonstrating that their genomes and ours are more than 99.5% identical, differing by only roughly 3 million nucleotides. When you consider the human genome has 3 billion bases, this is a drop in the bucket. In comparison, the genomes of our closest living cousins, chimps, differ from humans by approximately 30 million to 50 million base pairs. The findings also tend to disprove certain scientists' claims that Neanderthals and humans interbred more recently. The split of the Neanderthal and modern human lineages is considered to have occurred between 750,000 and 400,000 years ago. In a study that contradicts the prior dates, a substantially deeper duration of parallelism, associated with recurrent early mixing events, was determined. According to two of the most extensive investigations of Neanderthal DNA to date, humans and their near Neanderthal ancestors began diverging from a common ancestor approximately 700,000 years ago, and the two groups split definitively some 300,000 years later. Two teams of scientists used various techniques to sequence huge amounts of DNA recovered from the femur of a 38,000-year-old Neanderthal specimen discovered in a cave in Croatia 26 years ago. One team sequenced over a million base pairs, while another sequenced the remaining 65,000 pairs of the genome. According to the experts, the findings could provide light on the evolution of our own species, and pave the path for the creation of a comprehensive library of the Neanderthal DNA. There is no evidence of interbreeding. In popular mythology, Neanderthals are depicted as prehistoric brutes who were outwitted by a more advanced species, humans, who emerged from the Red Sea region. 
However, excavations and anatomical examinations have revealed that Neanderthals used tools, wore jewelry, buried their dead, cared for their ill, created pictures on cave walls, and possibly sang or talked in a manner similar to ours. Perhaps more humbling, their brains were slightly larger than ours. The study uses DNA recovered from now extinct Neanderthal and Denisovan fossil remains dating back 40,000 or 50,000 years, as well as 279 modern humans from throughout the world. The findings highlight the fact that we are a fairly young species. We shared the world with other human lineages not long ago. Human evolution is more akin to a spider web of relationships than a tree with distinct branches. Scientists already know that modern humans and Neanderthals share some DNA, but different people share different sections of the genome. One goal of the study was to discover which genes are unique to modern people. It's a difficult statistical challenge, but the researchers created a useful method that accounts for missing data in ancient genomes. The researchers also discovered that an even smaller portion of our DNA, only 1.5%, is both unique to our species and shared by all living humans today. Those slivers of DNA may provide the most important clues to what genuinely defines modern humans. These genomic areas are strongly enriched for genes involved in neural development and brain function. Better tools enable us to ask ever more detailed questions about human history and evolution, geneticist Josh Akey explained. One population geneticist, however, questioned the author's notion that changes in the human genome are randomly dispersed rather than grouped around specific hotspots. The Neanderthal genome also helps us understand more about their appearance as evidence suggests that certain Neanderthals evolved pale complexion and red hair long before Homo sapiens. Interbreeding with Neanderthals, according to the British Natural History Museum, gave some of our ancestors unusual skin and hair. Large sections of the current human genome have no Neanderthal DNA, implying that other genes we may have acquired have been wiped away by evolution. There is also evidence that male infants of Neanderthal and modern human parents had limited fecundity implying that humans and Neanderthals were practically biologically incompatible, a phenomenon that is still observed today when closely related mammal species interbreed. Despite the legacy of Neanderthal interbreeding, intergroup mating was the exception rather than the rule. Because both cultures' populations were small, they did not come into contact with each other very often. There were also disparities in appearance and behavior, which were most likely far greater than the distinctions between individuals today. Since their discovery in 1856, Neanderthals have acted as a mirror of our own humanity. What we believe we know about them has been fashioned and molded to conform to cultural trends, societal conventions, and scientific standards. From ill specimens to primitive subhuman lumbering cousins to advanced humans, they have evolved. We now know that Homo neanderthalensis was remarkably similar to us, and that we even met and interbred with them. But why did they become extinct while humans survived, thrived, and eventually took over the world? Neanderthals appeared over 400,000 years ago, most likely from an ancestor who was an offshoot of Eurasian Homo erectus. They were immensely popular and spread from the Mediterranean to Siberia. They were extremely clever, with brains that were on average larger than those of Homo sapiens. They hunted big animals, harvested herbs, mushrooms, and shellfish, regulated fire to cook, constructed composite tools, produced garments from animal skins, made beads from shells, and carved mysterious symbols into cave walls. They looked after their children, the elderly, and the feeble, built shelters for protection, endured severe winters and hot summers, and buried their dead. Neanderthals did come into contact with our ancestors on multiple occasions over tens of thousands of years and the two species shared the European continent for at least 5,000 years. The biggest major distinction between Neanderthals and us is that they were extinct around 40,000 years ago. The exact cause of their demise is unknown, but it was most likely the result of a confluence of causes. First, the temperature during the last ice age was highly varied, moving from cold to warm and back again, putting a strain on animal and plant food sources and requiring Neanderthals to constantly adapt to environmental change. Second, there were never that many Neanderthals, with the total population never numbering more than tens of thousands. They lived in groups of 5 to 15 people, as opposed to Homo sapiens, who lived in groups of up to 150 people. These small, 
isolated Neanderthal communities may have become genetically unsustainable and vulnerable to Homo sapiens group raids. Third, there was competition from other predators, including groups of modern humans that arrived in Europe some 50,000 years ago. Many Neanderthals may have been incorporated into bigger groupings of Homo sapiens, we can speculate. Neanderthals left various traces for us to investigate tens of thousands of years later. Anthropologists have spent the last 150 years collecting fossil bones, stone, and wooden tools, trinkets and jewelry they left behind, uncovering burials, and now mapping their genome from ancient DNA. The Neanderthals, like the dinosaurs, had no idea what was in store for them. The dinosaurs, on the other hand, vanished abruptly after being struck by a massive meteorite from space. The extinction of the Neanderthals occurred gradually. Neanderthals now serve a distinct purpose in that regard, and so we see ourselves in them. They had no idea what was happening to them and had no choice but to continue on the path that would eventually lead to extinction. The loss of the Neanderthals teaches us that we should never take our existence for granted. Humans have been around for about 2 million years, but we have only achieved high levels of consciousness in the last 50,000 years or so and only had civilization for about 10,000 years. Maybe longer if you are a fan of Graham Hancock, but either way we are only at the very beginning of modern human existence. If we could last another 1 million years, the humans of the future would consider us to be Stone Age barbarians. This is why we must become a multi-planet species before the Earth is destroyed by nuclear war or burned up by the sun. Mars may be our last chance saloon.